Uh, when Sonny and Cher split up at the height of their success, many people couldn't believe it. The enormously popular duo who had conquered the tough TV scene in the United States and had nothing but greater fame staring at them for many years to come. But it obviously wasn't enough for this glib and talented lady. She wanted to be able to do it on her own. And boy, did she ever. Today, her image is known throughout the world. Her lavish wardrobes and stage productions are so popular that in Vegas, for instance, the only act uh, that equals her drawing capacity at Caesars Palace is Frank Sinatra. Uh, her solo effort on TV in her own series showed a clever and witty and sensitive and even outrageous side of her. Uh, and it endeared her to millions. And her fans would number, I think, as many women as it would men, as the share image holds enough fascination for all. As uh, some of the critics say, she's not the best singer nor the best dancer, but boy, can she entertain. And she's about to bring her million dollar production to Australia. She's just finished on stage at Caesars. We're thrilled to be talking to her live tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, an Australian greeting, if you please, for Cher. Yeah, right. Hello, Cher. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, really nice to see you again after all these years. I think the last time I saw you was, uh, what, the Sahara, I think, when I was working in the lounge or something many years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, when you and Sonny were working together. Where are you right now? Uh, we were a bit confused whether we're in your suite or your dressing room. Well, we're n actually, we're not in either. We're in um, Freddie Roman's dressing room because Frank is having the, the other dressing room uh, redecorated. Frank, you mean Mr. Sinatra? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, you, you can, can you see me? Yes, I can. You can't see oh, me. Okay. No. Yeah, no, I can see you. You're wearing a, um, a gold dress. Now they've got yes. to a shot of me. A gold dress. And, yes. uh, and something funny behind your head. What is that? Oh, it's a plant. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him Frank. I call him Mr. Sinatra. Uh, okay. Are you on a first name basis with him? I mean, when you see him, do you say hi, Frank? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to do that just once, even if it cost me a punch in the mouth. <laughs> what time is it there now, Cher? It's about uh, 2.50 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. Is there, is there a lot of uh, st goings on still going at that hour in the morning in Vegas? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I, Vegas is pretty much, well, you know, it's pretty much a 24-hour town. Yeah. And uh, what about you? Do you, uh, are, you a pretty, are you more of a lone person or do you party at night when you're finished or go see other acts and things? Well, by the time I'm finished, not very many other people are playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it depends. Sometimes I like to go out dancing. I don't gamble. And uh, most of the time I, I just go up to my room. Mm. I did of... two shows tonight too, so I'm pretty tired. Yeah, normally you only do one, but you've been doing two uh, on this stint in, in uh, Caesars. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, uh, on this one I did two tonight, and uh, I did two Friday and Saturday night. I see. And what made you decide that you wanted to come to Australia after all of these years? I don't, well, I've heard a lot of really nice things about it from my friends that have been there lately, and uh, someone asked, asked me to come down. Uh-huh. Who were some of those friends, Cher? Well, um, Olivia Newton-John's been telling me for a long time, but I figured she was pretty much prejudiced because it's her home, <laughs> that's home right. play, yes. the home country, you know. That's, that's true. And uh, actually, Gene Simmons of KISS told me that it was amazing, and Tina Turner told me that it was wonderful, and Bette Midler. Yeah, we had Gene. Gene Simmons was on the show here with us. He surprised me on my birthday last year. This uh, production that you do now, in all the things that I've been reading, it is a really huge, gigantic production. Uh, uh, what's involved in this show? Well, there's about um, 30 people, I guess, all told, and dancers and singers and uh, a couple of female impersonators mm -hmm. and a lot of props and I just, it's a pretty, it's a big Vegas show. Two questions about it. Are there two male strippers in this show? Oh yes, I forgot them. There are two? Where did you find two male strippers? Well, it's a big thing in the United States right now. It's kind of a big, it's a big trend. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah? And where did you find uh -huh. these, these two blokes that you use? 
Well, these, these guys are actually dancers. A, a lot of the male strippers are dancers because they don't just come out and just take off their clothes. They come out and do a whole routine and dance and all that. Uh -huh. There's a place called Chippendales in Los Angeles, and that's where we got the idea from. It's very, very big. The women love it. And only the women are allowed to go there. It's, it's, no men are allowed. Only women allowed? Yes. Uh-huh. And the women, you wouldn't believe the way they react. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do? Tell me. <laughs> well, I mean, there are the waiters when when they're finished doing their you know serving drinks and stuff like that then they have to kind of when the men are stripping they keep the women from jumping all over the guys and taking their clothes off and stuff like that oh, really? <laughs> i'll have to cross to one of those places and take a look at it what's this about a mechanical bull is that like the bull at Chili's in uh in yes. texas yes it's exactly they made it for us it's exactly like the bull in urban cowboy all right and what do you do with that uh, well, if you come to the show, you'll see. Ah, okay. And are you bringing the, you're bringing the mechanical bull with you? Yes. And also a 12-foot high heel. A 12-foot high heel? Yes. Uh-huh. Nice. Okay. How do you, if they tell me this is very, very, uh, a very active show for you, Cher. How do you stay in shape for these things? Well, I work out. I, um, I take dance class and... I lift weights and I run and I, I work out. Is lifting weights difficult for a lady? I mean, I know there's a lot more ladies pumping iron, as they say, but... Uh, yes. Yeah, is it difficult? No, it's not. You, you, do a, you do more repetitions with less weight. Have you ever hurt yourself? Well, I dropped a weight on my foot and broke it. <laughs> that's, oh. about, that's what I did, but not lifting, I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> that doesn't sound like much fun, does it? You, uh, no, I it wasn't. I know when I've seen you, when I watched you work at the, at the studio at CVS and other places, you wear costumes that are sort of, well, revealing would be a best word for it, I suppose, and, and skimpy. How do you keep, and yet you always have a tan, how do you keep from showing the lines on the tan? Because I don't wear anything when I get a tan. You don't? No. And is that, that of course, that you do that on purpose for that specific reason? Well, because there is no bathing suit that's cut in the right place for all my costume changes. Uh-huh. Well, let's talk about the costume changes. Now, how many costume changes are there in this production that you do? Um, there's 12. And, and how long do you wear each one for, Cher? Uh, probably about between five and seven minutes. Hmm. And is Bob Mackey still doing your gowns? Yes, he is. He did everything. He did all my gowns and, and everything for everybody in the show. That's pretty interesting about him, though. I mean, you actually met him when they started doing Sonny and Cher. If I'm not mistaken, weren't you the first lady on television that actually had a man assigned to a program specifically to do your clothes? No, Carol Burnett had... He was doing Carol Burnett's show when, oh. when, when we started. And uh, I had always thought... I had done Carol Burnett's show a long time before Sonny and Cher, and I had thought if I ever had my own show or, or if Sonny and I ever had, had a show together that I would love him to do my costumes. Mm. And so when we got the Sunday and Chair show, he just said he would do it. Yeah, this has been a long-running relationship with you two, though. Yes, ten years. And, and who makes the decision on the costumes? He bring you designs and say, this is what I think you should wear, and uh, do, you have the, do you knock them back sometimes? <laughs> well, we talk about it, and he'll give me um, a whole bunch of different designs on one idea, and then, and then we'll pick one, you know? And sometimes, Almost, almost always, he and I are so close in, in our thoughts, he almost always gets stuff that I like. Yeah. Talk, let me just talk about uh, Sonny and Cher just for a moment. Uh, uh, a lot of people, as I said in the introduction, a lot of people were shocked when you two split up. Um, uh, did, how did you feel about that at the time? I mean, did you have apprehensions about going out on your own? Well, when I first split up with Sonny, I didn't really think about going out on my own, really. I just thought about splitting up with Sonny, and I didn't, my mind didn't go very much past splitting up with him. Mm. It, was, it was really, it was, it was over a year before I worked by myself. Right. And the children, are children traveling with you? Yes, I'm going to bring them for the first week, and then they've got to come back and go to school, but I just don't want them to miss the opportunity to go to Australia. Yeah, Chastity is the girl, and the boy's name is... Elijah. Elijah. Uh -huh. Right. And are they show business inclined, those two? I don't know. I think that Elijah is very much so, and I'm not sure about Chas. Uh-huh. Elijah know who you are and what you're about? Yeah, but it, he didn't always. The first time he ever saw me in makeup and doing a show, I think he was about a year and a half, and 
I came to kiss him goodnight and he just started crying. I, he didn't know who I was until my voice came out of my mouth. <laughs> I guess I'm pretty strange. My mother the star. Listen, Cher, when I finish, uh, I'm going to say goodbye to you now. When we finish talking, I'm going to uh, tell everybody about your dates and when you're coming out here. I'm, unfortunately, I'm sorry, we'll be off the air by then. Uh, I'll be back in L.A. And I wish I could have seen you in person here, but I know you'll have a lovely time. And, uh, you know, Bette Midler had a terrific time here. I'm sure you will, too. And uh, if everybody doesn't go out and see your show, they're crazy. It is a heck of a spectacular. And I thank, thank you, you so much. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thank Christy Kane for us. She's been really cooperative. And your manager okay. is, your manager's, manager's over here. I'll tell him you're all right. All okay? right. Hi, Billy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very Bye -bye. much, Cher. All the best, and I hope you love Australia when you get here. Bye. Okay, no, no, no. Take care, my love. Be good.